know, you can extend what's already there and, and leverage that. Or you can go back to the drawing book and look at what's in your back garden. You know, I like to say this a lot. Um, Sri Lanka is very problem rich. So you have good fertilizer to basically, you know, create models from Sri Lanka. If you pick a domain and you become the best at it, I think that's definitely something you can, we can do out of Sri Lanka. Thank you, firstly, to the, the panelists. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Uh, and I think the reason why we phrased the, the topic for today as being how can um, Sri Lanka leverage AI today uh, is simply because AI has been around for a long time now. It's been in conversation for a long time. Um, and particularly over the last few years, it's been evolving every single day, literally. And that's not a metaphorical expression. So really, I think the discussion today is really how, how, what is happening currently and in the very short uh, term future, uh, what can we do to better leverage it? So I'm going to straight away dive into it and maybe, Jeevan, I'll, I'll start with you, um, you know, from, from uh, kind of a private sector view, uh, working with startups who are leveraging AI already, um, and also from a Sri Lankan perspective, uh, what are what are your kind of overview on the AI space and some of the um, con concepts, business models coming out of using AI uh, at the moment in business? So I think um, uh, before I get into the hot topic of ChatGPT, I think let me just lay you know I think uh, what we've been doing um, ever since I was Slascom chairman. One of my main mandates was. Um, actually popularizing the concept of AI. Um, and I think we kind of did that because the two presidential candidates uh, the year after our, um, you know, I was chairman, uh, mentioned AI in their national AI policy. Of course, they didn't quite understand <laughs> uh, how AI was to be used, but at least in, in terms of popularizing it, um, I think it's become a topic of mainstream discussion even recently, I think. Um, um, you know, pr uh, President Ronell said, hey, we need a task force on, on AI and, you know, what we need to do to kind of get there. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the, the question was, how do we use AI or, or, you know, how can AI be leveraged? Well, first of all, I think we all need to start uh, our digitization journey, right? Which is a very basic level thing, right? Because you, if you can't build AI models on top of, uh, on, on, you know, on paper, right? So you need to start, um, um, most companies have yet to begin their digital journey. And, and I think uh, that's a call for private sector and most private sector organizations are now figuring out ever since COVID. And COVID was one of those kind of turning points um, to, to enabling uh, people to get onto the digital journey, I feel. Uh, globally, um, it sort of happened where you had a lot of demand for people, you know, going digital. Um, so once you're able to go digital, um, and this has to be driven by bo both private sector and garment sector, um, um, where garment, every um, kind of, um, you know, if, if every uh, institution has an open data policy framework, and I think there was some good inroads by, for example, the ICTA to kind of set those frameworks, right, where um, you can use data generated by them and, and build services on top. Um, that's the data that the startups need to kind of build, you know, faster, better, quicker services, right? Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, we're in this world of, we're starting to enter generalized AI now with, Chat GPT, which has you know this become this huge phenomenon now, where um, a lot of things are possible very quickly, right? And and I think um, I, I would encourage more people to play around with what's possible. Um, you know, you can you can use Chat GPT now to do research. You can use Chat GPT to do um, uh, content generation. You can use Chat GPT today to do. Um, you know, uh, marketing, uh, generating marketing content, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think the, uh, of course, the one caveat is once you do that, you don't really own the model. 
Um, so I would, I would recommend people to maybe um, start on leverage on what's there. So for example, ChatGPT. And, and basically, as you kind of um, leverage ChatGPT, to, you can build your own LLM. There are open source LLMs available by storing the question and answers or FAQs or whatever content that you have that you can train your own LLM on and kind of, and kind of go, right? So there are lots of possibilities to, to now uh, scale and grow in this race uh, towards generalized AI with ChatGPT and et cetera coming on board. I think this makes things very, very exciting. And you know, there's not a dull moment in AI. And I think 2023 um, has been deemed the year of AI. So it's going to be a very exciting year for, for uh, AI ML. Yeah, but, but just, just on that whole thought process of, you know, again, you know, larger models with huge amount of uh, kind of investment going into it like ChatGPT. Uh, do you think that uh, some of the products and solutions built out of countries like Sri Lanka will always just be, you know, really second fiddle or is there, is there more to leveraging AI? And, and do you have some examples to give so, to that? So the example that I use there is I, I said leverage Ch uh, ChatGPT to go to market, but then store your, you know, your answers, et cetera, so you can build your own LLM and create something of value. Uh, because otherwise you're giving, you're just basically giving your data to ChatGPT, and, and they're gonna, you know, keep keep growing. So um, you can build a specialized domain. Um, uh, we're about to release uh, a ChatGPT model for agriculture, for example, right? Very specific domain expertise in, uh, you know, for Singla, Tamil, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, coming out um, end of this month. So I think you can um, you can kind of use what's, uh, you know, you can extend what's already there and, and leverage that. Um, or you can go back to the drawing book and look at what's in your back garden and figure out um, what are the problems here. And uh, you know, I like to say this a lot, um, Sri Lanka is very problem rich. So you have good fertilizer to basically you know, uh, create models from Sri Lanka, right? Um, it could be something very specific. Uh, I'm not sure, like organic tea or something like that, uh, where you, you, you figure out a model in that particular industry and then you take it out, um, you know, you take it out global to, to, to the global industry. So um, these are things that you can do. And, I, and you know, we've done that with Spectrify, for example, we're focusing on T and then we're taking it across, across other models. So I think there's a lot to play with. Um, you have to be wary of, obviously, you can't take on Google, et cetera, et cetera, because they have tons of resources that you don't have, et cetera. But I think if you pick, pick a domain and you become the best at it, um, I, I think I think that's definitely something you can we can do out of Sri Lanka. Yeah, and then I want to kind of um, you know pick your views also, Dr. Suba, like uh, you know in terms of preparing ourselves for all the changes that are happening, and again leveraging on uh, education is obviously the, the key cornerstone in that. And what what in your opinion should the AI education look like? How early do you think? we should start, but also realistically, we can start in a, in a place like Sri Lanka, because obviously in, in some of the more developed countries, uh, it's, it's getting into the school curriculum. Uh, kids are exploring AI-based uh, uh, exercises very early on. Uh, so what are your thoughts on some of the short-term wins? You know, what can we do, for example, within the next uh, year or two to bring in AI into the education framework, leading up all the ways to higher education, obviously, which is your expertise? If we can keep some subjects out and include the AI concepts, not them to re create research on AI, but to use AI in their application domains, that will be very helpful for all the businesses in, the, in this country because uh, you, you are equipped with all the soft skills and the technical skills to work with the IT applications and also understand the AI vocabulary. So that's, uh, if it takes the IT industry today also, we have problems with the business analytics. That's uh, difficult to communicate the IT, IT vocabulary. So that's, that's an issue for us. That's um, the person is good in marketing, but he cannot sell AI product. That's an issue for us in the IT industry today. So if we can, at the A-level curriculum, if we can get the skills and the subject streams included into this, uh, other disciplines, not the computer science and IT, as the users of this technology, that will be a great help for the rest of the university curriculums as well. And even the student 
doesn't go to the university. Still, he's having a sufficient skill on this AI and the, uh, his uh, business domain. And when it comes to the universities, I think the uh, universities are to have to modify all these uh, examinations. I think um, uh, having uh, recall in the memory of how well you have stored the algorithms and the theorems, I think they have to stop it now. And uh, I think ChatGPT can do it now, so now we don't need to uh, train our students to do that. So what is important for us is to, uh, uh, the problem in the um, university, I'm talking about not the users, but I'm talking about the creators of this technology. What we have to focus on, can a person realize the solution in terms of artificial intelligence? And is that possible, not, not to plug and play the APIs available? That can be done by any developer. So they realize in this artificial intelligence problem, uh, to a given pro solution to a given problem is utter important. That realization is what we're missing as a country. So we can see the students uh, getting the, all the APIs integrated and somehow find a solution. But getting this solution conceptualized, the moment you realize and identify the problem, is what we have to develop as a country. That is not there. So it doesn't just cover by the introducing artificial intelligence theorems to the uh, university educations. If it is so, now we, have, we shouldn't have this problem because we are teaching AI, right? So that's, uh, that's a gap between what is being taught in universities and what being really applied in the industry. So for that, I think the universities cannot stand alone in themselves. The reason is, if you take the financial institutions like banking, if you want to predict a business model of churning customers for a loan borrowers, most of the data fields inside the bank has no value, believe me. Because the, if you get the corporate users, the most of their external market fluctuations and how it affects to their business is outside factors. Share market pricing and the government regularizations and the neighborhood market fluctuations. So you can't just looking at the internal data, you cannot see whether that customer will be able to pay you a loan within the next few months or not. So that's will tell by the external factors that lies completely outside the bank. So that's, uh, and if you take the health industry, that's totally the difference. So you get the health industry, that's most of the data inside the hospital talk about the, the patient's conditions. It has very lightly to depend on the external factors. So the doctor's prescription and symptoms and the clinical data, all these things will tell me that what is the stage of these patients for the next few months. So tell me how to teach these things in the universities. That's, that's not possible, right? So the, um, I have heard some of the uh, criticisms. So I'm open for, as an academia and as an industry as well, I'm in the both field. So the, um, the people saying the academic research has uh, like no contribution to the industry. Of, well, of course not, not possible for us. The reason is the academic research uh, works with the open data sets. The open data sets are well clean and there's no noises and no outliers, no specific problems defined. Can you find a, a corporate user in the financial institutions that where the market fluctuations and the neighborhood market uh, identification and segment fluctuations affect to his business, except the central governor's policies, and how that will be affect his loan in this particular bank? So that's not possibly tell me any data set outside there. Right, so that's coming with working with the industry. The people have to develop that theory to the applications realizations. So for that, it is not a long journey a university can accomplish. It has nothing to do with the government. I think we have to merge with the industry. So the, as long as the industry come and give this gap filled, this gap will never be filled by the university alone. So this is, the curriculum teaching artificial intelligence, and if I, I am the person teaching in my faculty the deep learning and neural networks of this, my students, that it's very, for me, I can say this is the uh, data set and how the fluctuations and external factors are, but for them to realize it, they should feel that data, they should feel the features are failing, and 
the fleet engineering processes are failing, they, they should fail it. Once they feel this pre-processing and fleet engineering processes where these hiccups are happening, then they will realize what algorithmic improvements and how the model should be further improved to tackle these issues in this particular domain. That's come with the data, and that's when the background, the curriculum can give. What is neural network only? I can teach, okay, this is how you can model the neural network, but for this particular domain, to handle this uncertainty and noises present, and where the fluctuations are happening in the external environment, how you can predict the internal uh, element next moments is completely impossible for me to teach inside the classroom. Right? So that's, uh, that's the industry needs to collaborate with these universities very closely. And because for me, the business knowledge might not be there to realize that problem is existing inside that entity. And I could not realize the problem, I cannot formulate a solution. So I can formulate solutions for the simple models and data sets available outside for them me to train them. Okay, this is how neural networks is proven, this is how you do the coding. But to realize that solution, you should feel the data, you should understand, realize the problem. So I think instead of we talking about how university education should be changed, what's the curriculum? Of course, there are certain things the universities could do themselves, like uh, interacting with the industry and working with the industry and bring the data inside and establishing these research laboratories. I think in our country, very few companies, I think, um, have sponsored the master research supervisions so that at least one year master supervision, so master research completions. So if we could get that to solve some real industry problems for our students, I think that any cur curriculum will be enabled for us to realize that and fill that gap. Yeah. And Dr. Ruan, would you kind of, you know, as a solution-based approach to, to this, do you also think that, uh, you know, do you see, see similar views or even something that you can add on to this? Very dangerous to have two academics in a 20-minute session, but... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so Jeevan was talking about business opportunities and, you know, uh, mainly looking at what we can export with this. I, I, you know, I'm obviously on, on, on the public good side, right? Uh, I think um, uh, from uh, that side, what this technology can do is basically open the black boxes, right? And, and, and we can all uh, see these black boxes. Uh, one is a law, right? The law, right? We are totally dependent on lawyers, right? We, we have no clue. So we go to a lawyer and ask, you know, how, so can you imagine if you have a Sri Lankan law, large language model, legal law, large language model, um, we don't have to do that anymore, right? In fact, the judges will have to look at, you know, what, 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 what the system is going to say, right? So the, the only problem is quite a lot of resources if you want to uh, train a language model from scratch, right? That's a challenge. Uh, for medicine, that's another black box, right? We just go and ask the doctor and we kind of uh, say, yeah, yeah, and take the medicine, right? But um, that's a little less of a problem for us because uh, medical knowledge is more or less global, mm. right? Mm. And there's a lot of work on clinical LLMs. I think we can tap into that and uh, make people aware that, you know, you don't have to depend on your doctor. You just go and ask that first. I hope people do that uh, with drugs already, right? Already we can do it with Medline and things like that. So that's about, you know, so how do we open these black boxes that like keep um, citizens trapped? Um, on the education side, yeah, I've, I mean, uh, Subha has given a very comprehensive answer. Uh, let me just say, um, <clears throat> theoretically, Say these bunch of students, right? These are like really smart, self-motivated students. You know, basically, um, you don't have to go to class, right? If you're self-motivated, you can teach yourself using these technologies, right? Um, I can remember <clears throat> my son came and said, you know, this 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 lecturer, you know, has a book, 
and uh, he's teaching, and, but there are lots of uh, gaps. So I said, just find out the name of the book. And of course, luckily there were, you know, Z library and all these things. And once you get the book, you know, you don't have to go to the class because you have the whole thing, right? And these people, are, you know, obviously do that. So with uh, this kind of generative AI, uh, you don't need to read the book also, right? But you need to be able to ask the right questions. So for self-motivated people, I think, um, not just university, even school, this technology is com completely disruptive. For those, uh, I, I think only about 10% of Sri, La Sri Lankan students are at that level. So what do we do with the rest? Uh, I think we teach them prompt engineering, right? Um, we have to teach them because uh, they will not be able to do it by, by themselves, right? So you guys can teach them, right? How do you, um, you know, because, yeah, you just go and say, you know, give, like those days we used to search Google. We just go and say, I don't know, some nanotechnology or something, and you don't know where to start, like 100 documents. and you, you don't. So similarly, if you ask some very basic question, uh, you know, you will get a very basic answer. So how do you improve that? And, and the good thing with this is that your questions will be uh, your questions, right? So the other day, someone was having a shower and um, was wondering why the water doesn't go into the na navel, right? So you can go and ask, you know, um, or, or you can ask whether do all mammals have actually this happened to someone. And uh, so I said, just go and ask. And then they came and said, yeah, actually there are, the marsupials don't have an umbilical cord. Even I didn't know that, right? All the other mammals have, apparently. So see, it's curiosity driven. So you, you kind of give, give them the curiosity to find out things. So, so I mean, um, uh, unfortunately, of course, you will not be able to get high marks at the exam because the, the answer, correct answer is what's in the teacher's head. It's not what's in chat GPT or anything like that, right? It's in the teacher's head. So uh, my daughter, for instance, uh, when asked uh, for three uh, um, reptiles, one of the answers was wrong. But she came and said, you know, I saw this in the zoo. Yeah, it, it was uh, Garial. Even I didn't know, to be honest. But there is a, a crocodile-like uh, animal called the Garial, which is endemic to our, our region. But the teacher, of course, marked it wrong, you know. So, so there's a difference between getting good marks and uh, uh, the quest for knowledge. These two are two different things. So if you don't worry about too much the marks, then I think you need to just expose them to this. Um, the group I mentored, right, um, they, um, from zero knowledge, I would say, about this whole area, uh, got very far. And uh, the, the main thing is actually they, they, they had an exam yesterday and they're having an exam tomorrow, right? The university exam, right? So I said, well, you get much more here than getting a few marks more at the exam. And I, I'm happy that they, uh, you know, are here and, you know, totally believe that. And that is the fact. And Jeevan, just to kind of come back to you, because we've, you know, heard a lot about the education uh, viewpoint, you know, again, looking at uh, the space you're in, in looking for talent, uh, as much as obviously, uh, you know, large corporations like IFS is interested, uh, you know, what, what do you see as some of the key challenges uh, either in the application of this knowledge or the, or the curiosity itself? Where, and what kind of, you know, what kind of traits are you looking for uh, so, within the AI space as well? So I think, um, you know, th they touched upon this, right? Uh, knowledge has become a commodity, has been becoming a commodity for a long time. And now with tools like ChatGPT, et cetera, is... Uh, it's 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 you know it's it's overly a commodity, right? It's it's not knowledge is not lacking, right? Um, with the in, advent of the internet, um, it became very easy to find to get knowledge. 
um, with tools like Chat, Chat GPT, et cetera. Now you can go very deep dive, and it's even closer to your fingertips, right? Um, um, so it is not like it. It is not about knowledge, and we have to tell our politicians and you know people, leaders, etc. This is not about creating a knowledge economy. Um, I think it's about creating a creative economy, and it's really how. And I've been saying this for a long time. It's how you apply the knowledge that you have in the context that you are to create something of value, right? And that's what Hatch is about. That's what we do here, right? In in this particular challenge. Um, there, was a, there was a problem. Um, they, they had this particular knowledge. Is how they applied it to create a solution for, for that particular challenge is what was important, right? And, and that's fast. You know, I think in, in, in the old days, um, there were people with knowledge, and they would you know, give it to you um, over a classroom. That's fast disappearing. Right, the old way of education, and I think she's talking about that. It's like, okay, how fast can you solve a problem? How fast can you be of value? I used to think um, there would be certain types of knowledge domains that maybe AI couldn't solve, like philosophy, for example. But yesterday I had a very interesting conversation, philosophical conversation with ChatGPT. Brenda, I don't need you anymore. Um, so, uh, you, know, you know, I think uh, it's. It's 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 fast. Dis dis knowledge is being fast disseminated, and it's it's how quickly you can use the knowledge you have to to do something creative. All right. So just in the interest of time, I think we'll take a few questions. Uh, you can direct it at any of the panelists, or maybe something that you want general comments from all three of them. Uh, feel free to shout out your questions. The What's process? the process of changing the university curriculum? Because the curriculum has a gap, and then who's responsible for that? I I I, I think um, universities are sorry to say this, guys, but but going to die. Um, I, I I don't think university is going to be needed anymore in the future. I think. So from the two <laughs> doctors, I think uh, obviously the the computing departments have to take some responsibility. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because, uh, and, and it starts with uh, awareness building. I mean, awareness. Our vice chancellors, UGC, and so on, you know. For them, this is an interesting phenomenon, right? This is interesting, okay, they'll do it privately. But, you know, in, you know how, how does it affect the university curriculum is not, not obvious, right? So, um, and, and that's a long process. Uh, the university system uh, almost deliberately is conservative, right? Uh, partly that's to avoid, you know, jumping on the next bandwagon, right? But in this case, uh, you know, a delay means, of course, um, we miss the bus. And therefore, I think, I don't know, uh, I'm sure even uh, Subha will agree, I think we have to do it Locally, you know, and it has to be a bottom-up push, trying to change the uh, top. Maybe some people can uh, get involved in that, but that's going to be a long, drawn-out, slow procedure. So yeah, no. Uh, actually, that private universities have a have an advantage in that, and yet they also may be uh, kind of having constraints uh, with their principal. Dr. Subai, anything to add to that? Or? Yeah, the, um, my experience with the University of Morita is a little bit different. So we have the BSAI that's already started in two years ago, and we have MSAIs. And IT faculty of University of Morita have all the latest subject streams included in the, all the three curriculums, including IT and ITM and CS Engineering have very good curriculum covered in uh, artificial intelligence and electronics as well. So the, um, we don't wait for a five-year cycle. We, whenever the subjects comes and we find it uh, appropriate to include the curriculum, we do the modifications right away. And also, uh, we don't just depend on the curriculum and subject streams. We try to get the industry laboratories and workshops. And time to time, we get our tech talks from the industry and keep all the things up to date. And finally, we try to integrate most of the things that we learn from industry. Uh, the, to the final year projects, and that making 
make them more suitable and reduce the gap. The responsibility is not only within the universities. I, I strongly believe it. It's building to the entire government as well as the industry is a part of it. Because um, I think it's a collaborative task. So uh, finally, we can come up with any artificial intelligence curriculum and how you can deliver it, how you can implement such curriculum that effectively that somebody else can uh, use the products that we develop, students are our products. So how can, how utilize the, our students to their industry stream and sector is very important to us. So there's the stakeholders, the industry and the academia and the government and even the public has the full responsibility because there's no, their point of is that um, the people think education is up to the academia and academics should always decide. And I think it is not like that. The public awareness of having that technology aware students or child in the family, they should be feel that's how secure their economic level in future. The moment the family realize that, they will invest it, they will commit it. So that will be a force for us to make the quick changes to the curriculum and recall and engage with the high authority in a more uh, bigger voice because that is missing in this country. This awareness and public motivations to enforce the local authorities for quick decisions is still missing. I think that awareness building is very important and the field of families and everybody that having a bachelor degree in that area and having that technology awareness, how well impact to their economic level in future will define how well that family committed on that education sector. Because if I'm ready to send my students to a university in art curriculum, if I feel that the art curriculum can also get the AI technology if you work a little bit harder, then the family will motivate the students to go in there rather than just getting a degree. I'm not degrading any degree. But if you have a certain stream that's enable you to learn AI plus, application of AI plus the art and so on, that is more valuable than you just taking the art degree. That should be focus and start from the family. And if the family and the society is aware of this value set, then it will force the entire workforce for artificial intelligence and IT enabled technologies. Then nobody has to develop another awareness program so if we can develop this awareness to the society, the students will stop taking, uh, I would say, taking streams, which is not uh, very demanding. You find very difficult to find jobs. They will automatically move into that area and start learning, and that will give them very good competitions. I, I personally believe the private universities to the 100%. I believe the best guy will come the first place respective of whether it's government or private sector. The student should get the equal chance to be the best place. If he has the knowledge, he should be in the best place. So it doesn't matter which is true. It doesn't need to be through the university of either private or public. It can be definitely from all level as well. But the given moment, if that student process a good knowledge, he should have that ability to perform into the level of expectation, that should be the best student of this country. So uh, that's what I believe the education sector should be looking into. Yeah. Thank you, and just because of the interest of time and because uh, particularly I think the participants are also eagerly waiting for the next phase, which is probably uh, the announcement of the results, uh, we will have to wrap up, but thank you very much, Dr. Ruan, Dr. Subha and Jeevan. Uh, for participating in the panel and for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs>